Howdy, my totally is always tubular gamers, and we're back with another Need for Speed ranking video. This is part three of my Need for Speed ranking video. See, we had part one where we looked at all the classic Need for Speed games, part two where we looked at all the NFS games from the 2000s, and now we have part three where we're looking at every modern Need for Speed. See, we're looking at every Need for Speed from 2010, starting with Hot Pursuit 2010, all the way up until the most recent release, Need for Speed Unbound, releasing this year, 2022. I'll only be looking at the home console games, the main games, not the handheld or the mobile titles. I've played enough Need for Speed, I don't need to play the mobile and handheld titles at this time. Now I gotta say, when it comes to modern Need for Speed, they're all actually pretty different from each other. You can tell there's a real shift, no pun intended, between each release and how the series was changing, evolving, and adapting. And you know, sometimes they got things just right and they created one of the greatest NFS games imaginable, and other times they really dropped the ball. But we're going to be looking at all of them regardless. We're going to be ranking them based off of quality, how well they've aged, how easy they are to pick up and play, etc. And uh, you know how it goes, personal feelings, all that stuff. So let me know down below your favorite modern Need for Speed game or favorite Need for Speed game. I'm sure I'm going to have some hot takes in here. So just let me know. Like, share, comment, sub, all that good stuff. Let's just get right into it. What do I think is the weakest of the modern Need for Speed games. And here we have Need for Speed Payback releasing in 2017, developed mostly by Ghost Games. Now, I remember when this game came out, people were pretty mixed to negative about it. Even pre-release, people were suspicious of it. I remember watching it pre-release going, this just looks awful, and not even getting it at release. I recently just played it for this video, and I gotta say, my initial reaction and skepticism was correct. I didn't like this game very much, and I didn't think it was very good. This game tries to build on Need for Speed 2015 in a number of ways it does, and in a number of ways it does not, particularly with the story, which is somehow worse than 2015's. It takes place in what I'm guessing is like Vegas, and sees your main cast of characters basically trying to pull off some heists. It's all about you going up against this organization that they call The House, and it's The House Always Wins, and Never Bet Against The House, and it's got a bunch of illegal street racing, and gambling, and all things like that. And you know, there's a little bit more to this story than that, but I just was not a fan of this game's story at all. I thought the cast of characters was as cringe as it gets for Need for Speed. I didn't think it was endearing or interesting or really anything positive. I just was rolling my eyes the whole time with all the the house always wins jokes and the characters were just as lame as it gets. Like, they try to be charismatic or interesting, but I just could not care less about this game's story or its characters. I was thoroughly unimpressed. Pressed. But I mean, Need for Speed has never had the greatest stories. Maybe the gameplay is still good. Well, I didn't particularly like the gameplay either in this game. When it comes to how the cars handle and drive, I think the handling is actually pretty decent here. It's probably the best aspect of the whole game, is that the cars actually feel alright. It feels very similar to 2015. It probably actually feels a little bit better, and the cars have a little bit more weight to it. I think it's actually good in that aspect. It's a shame that the environment you drive around in isn't that exciting. I think this has got to be one of the most boring open worlds that Need for Speed has ever had. It's really just a big open desert, and as someone who's been to Vegas a ton of times, yeah, that's pretty accurate, but that doesn't make for an exciting game world. This game is like the only Need for Speed game with a 24 hour day night cycle at least, so that's something to note. When it comes to actually like playing through the story mode though, really what it is is a series of missions where you pull off quote action driving and you basically have a bunch of movie like sequences that really try to be like Fast and Furious where there's multiple playable characters and you switch between them to pull off some kind of heist of some sort. And you know, there's still a ton of racing, most of the game still is racing, it's just everything leads up to these action sequences, and I don't like modern Fast and Furious, that's just my take, so I was again rolling my eyes here. The game's pacing isn't very good either, this game goes on way too long for what it is, taking well over 15, maybe even 20 hours. And all of this would make the game pretty lackluster, but what makes this game pretty bad in my opinion is the awful microtransactions. They are so egregious with all these loot boxes and then not really being able to customize your car because it's all tied to the loot boxes and microtrans- these are just bad. They're really bad, I'm not going to go into depth, there's plenty of videos out there documenting how bad it is. I can't believe they put this into Need for Speed. It's one of the worst like microtransaction systems I've ever seen. The loot boxes are awful in this game. And I just didn't really have a nice time with this game. I can say the soundtrack was pretty okay, and the user interface that very clearly copies Forza Horizon was pretty alright, but I do not recommend this game. I think it's the worst of the modern Need for Speed games. 
So here is Need for Speed The Run, releasing in 2011, and this would be the last Need for Speed game developed by EA Black Box before they were shut down. And you know, it pains me to have this game so low on the list, but when comparing all the Need for Speed games, yeah, it's pretty low down there. So the story is about our character Jack Rourke, an experienced street racer who finds himself in debt to the mob and has to pay them off, and he narrowly escapes death. He's then contacted by his friend Sam, who basically tells him about this race. It's from San Francisco all the way to New York City across the country with a ton of racers and a ton of money for the winner, and so he enters. The story and characters, yeah, it's pretty whatever, it's pretty stupid, but I like the premise, it's definitely a good premise, and I like the variety in locations. Now with this premise in mind, the run is a very linear racer, where you go from point A to B, you're not doing laps on any of these tracks, and you never do the same track twice. As you really go across America, a lot of this is really just a straight line where you'll make some turns here and there and you'll just be trying to pass up a certain number of people, and other times it's a lot more involved where you're racing one on one. And this game does something that Need for Speed had like never seen up until this point, scripted set pieces. Yes, like Call of Duty scripted set pieces. And you know, these are pretty interesting, like police chases that are all scripted or getting away from an avalanche. Like there's actually a couple set pieces here and I think they actually do add to the variety and they change things up. Unfortunately, not all the set pieces are gold. There's quick time events here for some of them, and these are just not good where you get out of your car and you're trying to get away from the police. Yeah, no, these were not good. They weren't good then. They're definitely not good now. This game really does feel like a movie when it comes to its pacing. It really is one crazy moment to the next. It's very high octane, and I think it's actually great. And when it comes to the driving itself, the game's handling is pretty good and the physics are more than solid enough. I think that the cars control fine, there's a good number of cars you can drive, you're not just limited to the initial car. But the customization is what you'd expect for a game like this. You can change the color of the car and that's it. Now to compare this game to a movie again, yeah, it feels like a movie when it comes to the game's length. You can beat this game in like three hours, four max, if you replay a bunch of sections. Unfortunately, the game is just crazy short. It is the biggest issue with this game by far is that you can beat it in one sitting in an afternoon very, very quickly. The game is just way too short for its own good and I know the idea of like always leave them wanting more but like this they just didn't give like anything here. And in, here in 2022 since autolog was taken offline you have to play the game in offline mode or you'll be just stuck loading on the main screen. And there is like a challenge mode here as well but I just didn't really even bother and then like I said multiplayer is gone. If this game was I don't know like double its length and had just as many exciting set pieces this could easily be way higher on the list but as it stands. Unfortunately, it's pretty forgotten nowadays, and while it does have some fun moments, I just can't really recommend it. Alright, and so here is Need for Speed, releasing in 2015, developed by Ghost Games. This was supposed to be a reboot of the Need for Speed series. They really tried to go back to what made Need for Speed so popular, with it being at night, and the underground, and car customization, and I guess these real-life cutscenes, which also return. When it comes to this game's story, Really, it's about you getting involved with this crew and just kind of being the best racers of the town. There's a number of characters you interact with here in the story. It's just laughably awful in this game. Like, the real-life cutscenes, they were never good in Need for Speed, but they were so bad that they were good, minus Undercover. Here, they're just awful. Like, they're just cringy, the story's pretty bad, and the characters, I just didn't really like any of them. See, the old games like Most Wanted and Carbon, they had a certain charm to them. This game just doesn't have that at all, and I mean, who's really playing this game for the story, though? So let's get to the gameplay, the brass tacks. How's the gameplay? The driving is pretty decent in this game. I think it's actually pretty good. All the cars feel pretty nice, and the game does have a good sense of speed. The drifting is pretty solid here. This is where they kind of change the drifting for Need for Speed that even the modern games use now, where you double tap the right trigger. And I know some people don't like it, but I actually think it feels pretty nice. I think the drifting is probably the best aspect of this game. It does feel nice, and it is satisfying. I think the game's open world is pretty generic, pretty bland, there's nothing really new here, nothing you haven't seen before from a Need for Speed open world, and the game only takes place at night, which I could've used some daytime to be honest. And unfortunately, the issues don't stop there. Like I mentioned earlier, the story is just laughably bad, and the missions for the story really don't do anything that exciting or different. Once you've done a couple of them, you've seen like all the mission types in this game, it just doesn't do anything different from any Need for Speed game. 
there's, you know, your racing events, your drifting events. Sometimes you're with like a posse when you got to drift or race. It just doesn't really do anything new. And you know, I get it. New ideas for a series as long running as Need for Speed is hard, but if it's not going to be new, then it should at least be, you know, really refined, really good, and it's just not that. The cop chases in this game are laughably bad. Like, these are some of the easiest police to escape ever. In fact, the AI in this game are hella sussy, like they're a bit brain dead sometimes, which is particularly annoying in the events where you have to be near them or follow them in some capacity and they're just hella slow, they get stuck on the environment, or they just glitch out entirely. And then this game also has the always online bullshit that I really hate where they try to have it be a living, breathing, open world where real players are driving around in your game also, and if you go into offline mode, there's AI players to simulate this, and what this ultimately means is you'll be doing a race and some random driver AI, real person, whatever is going to drive in the way and you're going to smash into them and you're going to have to restart the event, which happened to me plenty of times. This always online shit sucks. I don't like the random AI drivers driving around in the world. No, get rid of it. Really, playing through this game was just a very uninteresting experience, like, it was just boring. The world's boring, the mission types are boring, the story's boring, the driving and the drifting? It's pretty good, it's the best part of the whole game, but my overall experience, yeah, it was just boring, the pacing is very slow, the game isn't stupid long, it took me like 10-11 hours to finish, but it just wasn't very enjoyable. I'll be real with you, I had Need for Speed on on my right screen, with the volume pretty much all the way down because the music sucks, and on the left screen I had Survivor open and was just watching that with my friends while playing playing this because Survivor was way more interesting than this. I don't recommend Need for Speed 2015. It's not an awful game, but it's just not really worth playing. Okay, and so here we got Need for Speed Rivals, developed by Ghost Games and Criterion, and it was released in 2013. Kind of hard to believe this game is like 10 years old now. I remember getting it at release and being pretty middling about it. Now, Rivals was kind of a mix between the new Hot Pursuit and new Most Wanted. I say new as if they're not like 10 to 12 years old, but newer Most Wanted in Hot Pursuit. The story has you playing as either a racer or a cop, and you know, the story's pretty basic. You just want to be the best, and you want to outrun the police, and the cops want to get them. It's pretty simple. There's not really much to it. Now, Rivals was the first need for speed for the PS4 and Xbox One era, and they were really hyping up the game's presentation, like the dynamic weather system and all of the different texture, all that good stuff. And you know, the game does look pretty good. It's a shame that it runs at 30 FPS, even on PC, which I remember being a big bummer. And Ghost Games claims that the reason the game was at 30 FPS was because of the All Drive feature. Now, All Drive was a system used to seamlessly match make players within the same open world. Basically, it was the always online shit, where you'd have to always be online and random players would be joining your game and driving around, or they'd put AI to drive around if there was nobody. And, you know, it sounds like a good idea on paper, but this isn't paper, this is gameplay, and I've always disliked this. I remember back in 2013, I remember constantly I'd be moved to different games due to people leaving because of peer-to-peer -peer crap or just players just smashing into me because we just happen to be driving in the same area or the AI getting in the way like in Need for Speed 2015. I've never liked the all drive thing. I think it's again a good idea on paper but it just I don't think it works well in game. But when it comes to the driving and the handling and all that, I think it is pretty decent here. I don't think it's as good as Hot Pursuit 2010 or Most Wanted 2012, but I mean, I think it's pretty decent here. The cars feel nice and there's a decent selection here. The customization is actually pretty all right too, having some fun throwbacks to like underground. When it comes to playing through the game, you can choose between the cop or the racer, each with their own missions. When you're the racer, usually, you know, you're racing each other, you're racing other cars, you're trying to get away from the police, the typical stuff. And when you're a cop, it's much more like Hot Pursuit 2010, where it's all about taking out the racers and really just going after them. This game even has like weapons where the cops have EMPs and can pull down spike strips, but the racers even have stuff like jammers and stun mines and turbo, and this is an interesting dynamic. I don't think it's really expanded on all that much, and it feels about as basic as you would think it would feel in a game like this, but it's a nice little dynamic, I think. And then yeah, you just progress through a bunch of missions, you unlock new objectives and missions as you continue, and there's really not all that much to it besides that. The open world is based clearly off of California, and I mean, I like that, but I'll be real, this open world isn't too exciting, it doesn't have all that much going on, and the game's general flow and pacing are decent enough. It's certainly better than like Need for Speed 2015, but it's not amazing. 
And speaking of not amazing, we have the soundtrack, which I always thought was just kind of obnoxious. It just, I didn't like it then. I don't really like it now. I would say Rivals has definitely become one of the more forgotten Need for Speed games over the years, and I think it's pretty decent still. I think it is actually worth trying to some extent. I'm not going to say it's amazing. I don't like the auto drive. You can't pause the game because of it, and it doesn't do anything you haven't really seen before, but it brings everything together in a decent enough way, and the game still has some fun. You could certainly do a lot worse when it comes to Need for Speed, and the game is dirt cheap also, so keep that in mind. And so here we have Shift 2 Unleashed, released in 2011, developed by Slightly Mad Studios. Now Shift 2 is unsurprisingly very similar to Shift 1. It is a simcade where, you know, it's part simulator, part arcade racer. And really, they just tried to expand on what the first Shift game had. This game has a lot of cars and tracks from the first game, but there are plenty of new cars and tracks here. They've also created some tracks from scratch, which is cool. The game still has a very high attention to detail, not only for its cars, but the tracks as well. That interior view is still really nice, and now there's a bunch of other cars. It's a shame though the customization just isn't that great still. When it comes to the tracks, I really like how there's a lot more because I remember the first game I thought was a bit repetitive with its tracks. I mean, they only had a set number of real life tracks here. They just throw in some they made up and I actually really like that. It definitely gives some more variety, even if I have raced on more than half of these tracks in the previous game. Now, the first shift really let you play pretty much however you wanted. You could play this game like an arcade racer, or you could play it much more like a simulator. Shift 2 definitely leans more towards the sim side than Shift 1 when it comes to the driving, handling, and it feels much more weighted. Turning feels quite a bit slower, maybe that's just me, but coming from Shift 1 pretty much immediately, I thought the turning felt a lot heavier and a bit more sluggish. The game still does reward you pretty much with any playstyle, whether you're playing aggressively like an arcade racer or you're playing much more like a sim, but it, again, leans much more towards the sim. I like the game structure where it tries to mix it up with a lot of different events and even has like retro car events, the drift challenges, and time trials. In fact, when it really comes to events and just content, this game really has much, much more than the first Shift game had. This game is a lot longer than the first game. It's probably double the first game's length, like actually. And just like the first game, it can definitely get a bit old since you'll be seeing a lot of the same tracks, but there is a lot of content here. There's really a lot to see, and I wouldn't be surprised if there were people who were putting 20, 25, maybe even like 30 hours to try all the cars, try all the events, master everything, and that's pretty cool. There's actually a lot to it. Am I going to play this game over, say, some of the better Forza games or Gran Turismo games? That's a bit debatable. But how does it compare to the first Shift game? I would say that this game is a marginal improvement. I would say that it is slightly better. It isn't like leaps and bounds above the first Shift because the first Shift was actually pretty good. I think this game really just adds more and I'm not personally all that big on it feeling a bit more sim versus how the first game kind of lets you do whatever, but I still think this is the better game overall. If you like simcade games, I think this is one to try out. If you're looking for a simulator like Gran Turismo or Forza and you haven't tra tried this one, then yeah, I would say absolutely give it a shot, but also give the first shift a shot because the first one is pretty fun also. And so here we have Need for Speed Heat, which would be the last Need for Speed game developed by Ghost Games and released in 2019. I remember when Heat came out, there wasn't really much excitement for this game, but after finally playing it, I gotta say, I actually quite enjoyed my time with Heat, and I think it was a step in the right direction for the series. Now, Heat doesn't do anything all that new for the series, especially at this point, but what they did was they really looked at what excelled in the old games and kind of brought it into the modern era. It definitely feels like a big improvement on Need for Speed 2015. They just kind of dropped almost everything from Payback. Good. And when it comes to the story, they kept things simple. Your racer just shows up in the fictional town of Palm City that is very clearly Florida for this giant citywide expedition that has just a bunch of people racing. The cops don't like that either, and the cops are pretty aggressive and are trying to crack down on it. And that's all it is, and that's all it needed to be. We don't need some complex, ridiculous story with all these stupid characters. Yeah, there are some characters here, and the story does show up a few times throughout the game, but it's nothing too obnoxious or intrusive, and it's pretty basic.
So when it comes to the driving and the weight and sense of speed and drifting and all that, I think it's pretty good. It's a marginal improvement on 2015, and I think 2015 was pretty good when it came to that stuff. I think this is one of the better feeling Need for Speed games, and again, it has a good sense of speed. When it comes to the open world, I actually quite like it. Miami is pretty unique for a video game nowadays. There isn't too many games set in Florida, and I think it actually has some unique geography, and it isn't anywhere near as bland or boring as, say, Payback or 2015. 15s. So they dropped the 24-7 day-night cycle and instead you can switch between day and night and they're actually very different from each other. During the day, players can take place in the sanction race events which award players with cash that you can, you know, buy new cars and upgrades and you can customize your car and don't worry, there's no bullshit microtransactions, there's no stupid cards or loot boxes or any of that shit. You can just buy everything and it's actually pretty good here. I think the customization is fine and the car selection is decent. Anyway, you can get money from doing these races during the day and at night you have the street races which are illegal Ooh! and by participating in these illegal street races you get rewarded with rep and rep is basically you know like your level you need so much rep to continue through the game and be a certain level by doing these street races though you also attract the police now the police and heat are actually decently difficult to get away with. For the first time in quite a while, the police actually are not messing around. It's not just a bunch of brain dead idiots. They're not the smartest, but they can actually take you out and there is some challenge here. I thought the cop chases were actually pretty engaging and Again, it can actually get pretty difficult. The police, especially towards the end of the game, are really not messing around. I would say it's got some of the most difficult police chases in like the entire series. It's not as crazy as the old games where they got the attack helicopters shooting missiles at you, but they're really not messing around here. And I think it actually creates a really interesting good dynamic where you can lose all your rep, you can lose a ton of money if you get busted by the police, but it also creates multipliers. The higher the heat, the more rep you'll get from the events, the more money you'll get, and it's like it creates this really good risk versus reward system that I actually really like. And you can't abuse it and just turn the game off if you get busted by the police. You'll lose like everything. Now, when it comes to events, it's nothing you haven't seen before in a Need for Speed game. It's pretty much the same as 2015. However, thanks to the risk versus reward, an actual good police dynamic, and an actually fun, interesting map to go around with different geography, I think that it makes for a much more enjoyable time than 2015. There's, of course, the usual collectibles like street graffiti or billboards to smash, but genuinely, I did have a fun time with this game. The game's pacing is actually pretty good also. It decently ramps up the challenge and keeps things going thanks to the interesting police chases. And the game just actually ends. When it comes to its length, it's nowhere near as long as some of these other games. And honestly, I'd rather have that. It ends before it can get repetitive, but it's also not too short. And there's a bunch of side stuff to do as well. And what do you know, the soundtrack's actually pretty good. It's a bunch of funky tunes you would not expect in a Need for Speed game like at all. but. I think it works actually, it really adds to this game's vibe and I really did like the aesthetic of it. It was very different from the last couple games and I can appreciate it. I think Heat nowadays is actually decently underrated, I don't see all that many people talking about it. I didn't see many people talking about it when it released either, but I think it was a step in the right direction and I think it's a pretty fun time and I can totally recommend it. I see it for dirt cheap, like legit less than 2 or 3 dollars dirt cheap now, so I definitely think it's worth trying. And so here is the latest in the Need for Speed series, Need for Speed Unbound, releasing here in 2022, developed by Criterion Game. Now I gotta say, pre-release, this game did not look very good, it was very strange. They announced it like two months before it came out, which is never a good sign, and they didn't show a ton of it before it came out either, but I gotta say, Unbound is actually pretty good. They really took everything that worked from Heat and just continue to build on it. Is it like way better than Heat? No, I don't think it's way better than Heat and there's a couple things I think Heat actually does better, but I still actually really did enjoy my time with Need for Speed Unbound. I think the first thing we'll bring up that everybody notices immediately is the flashy art style and presentation. Heat looked really good, this game graphically looks really good, but what it has is it has a bunch of weird cell shaded and graffiti art clashing with the realistic type. For instance, all your characters look very like almost anime, and when you're drifting or boosting it adds all these cool visual effects. I really like this, this is really unique, the series has never had anything like this, it gives it some personality, some charm, and I hope it stays actually, I think it's very different and I quite like it. 
When it comes to the story, it's nothing too complex. You play as your custom created character and you hang out with your friend Yaz and the two of you work at this auto shop known as Rydell's Rides. And you know, one day Yaz has enough of it, some shit goes down, couple years pass and you know, you just wanna be the best racer. There's this big event in the city where you're gonna do these giant granular races and who's the best, who's in your way, of course it's Yaz. So, you know, two former friends going at it, nothing too crazy. I think the story's pretty all right in this game. I think the dialogue is, pretty middling for the most part. Sometimes it's okay and sometimes it is a little, hey fellow kids, how do you do? Like when they're talking about Reddit or Instagram or anything like that, I'm just like, ugh, please stop. But you know, for the most part, I'd say the story was fine, the characters were fine, and the writing for the most part was fine. I've heard some people call this like, woke need for speed, which I think is just absolutely ridiculous. I mean, yeah, the game does have a little bit of social commentary, but it's not to the point where I'd say it's woke or anything like that. The dialogue was fine enough, but I could definitely see some people being annoyed with how much dialogue there was. I wish low-key there was a way to turn it off. But all that can be ignored. How does the game play? The game plays very similarly to Heat. It feels very similar, and I think when it comes to the game's handling, its feel, and sense of speed, it's very good. I would say it's the best it's been in quite some time. Not that the other games were even close to bad. This just feels really nice, and I think that it does have a very good sense of speed. I think the visual effects help add to that sense of speed. And I would say from a feel and handling perspective, it's pretty nice. I really do like the drifting. I think the double tapping of the right trigger just really works. I know, again, some people don't like it, but I really do. Now, when it comes to the open world that is very clearly Chicago, I'm actually a bit mixed on it. I don't think it's all that exciting. It feels a bit generic for the most part, and it just doesn't really do anything crazy. I think Heat actually had a better open world. I think Heat had a better soundtrack too. This game's music, I'll just say it's not for me. I know a lot of it has to do with like rap since Aesop Rocky is one of the main selling points, but it, it just wasn't for me and I'll leave it at that. But when it comes to progression and playing through this game, it's nothing too crazy and nothing you haven't seen before. There's a day and night part of each day and your heat carries over throughout the day. As your heat goes up, the police get more and more aggressive. If you get taken out by the police, you lose all the money you've earned in that run. You have to go back to your garage to basically save all the money. When it comes to the events, there's races, there's drifting events, there's an event type where you have to smash a bunch of stuff, there's an event type where you gotta get away from the police or a small little time trial, and that's really all there is when it comes to the events. It's nothing that you haven't seen before outside of smashing stuff. I really wish this game had maybe one or two more event types to it just because these other ones can get a bit old, especially since you do a lot of them in the same location and you'll be going on the same track numerous times, which seems a bit silly since it's an open world. But still, I thought the racing was pretty solid. I think this game has actually got a really good challenge to it. The first couple hours of this game not only feel a bit slow, but they're actually pretty difficult. You'll find yourself not winning these races, like not coming in first because you just don't have a car strong enough to win these races. The car you start with is pretty ass and you gotta upgrade it quite a lot to make it pretty decent and get, the, get that number up. But trust me, stick with it even a little bit and you'll get a lot faster, you'll know the map a lot better, and you'll start winning some races, start winning those bets, getting a ton of money, and then before you know it, you'll have a couple cars and you'll be able to race in the Grand, the giant race that everybody wants to compete in. There's a couple weeks in game, so there's so many days, and the game actually has a pretty good length to it. They give you more than enough chances to get enough money for the big races or a good enough car. That was never an issue for me. And I really did like the whole progression cycle of trying to upgrade your car and make it super raw and upgrading the garage and just getting all the good car parts. I think the customization of this game is pretty solid. You can make some pretty cool looking cars. You can download some wraps like the other games. But all in all, I did enjoy my time with it. Do I think that the game goes on a little too long? Eh, a little bit, but I also might have done more races than necessary, so I'll just chalk it up to that. I had about 20, 25 hours before I was done with this game, and I don't really see that there's a ton of replayability outside of that. There's some online races you can do, but I'm all right, and I am so glad they got rid of that stupid all-drive crap, like, thank goodness. I think Unbound is definitely another step in the right direction from Heat. There are some things I like more about Heat, but I think Unbound is the better game overall, and I actually do recommend it, especially if you haven't played Need for Speed in forever. The game is priced at 70 US dollars uh, at release, which I think is quite a bit for this. It's very steep. I would say wait for it to be at least half off, but if you like racing games, if you haven't played Need for Speed in quite some time and you want to try it again, yes, try this one. And so here we have Need for Speed Most Wanted, developed by Criterion and releasing in 2012. Despite sharing the Most Wanted name, this game has nothing to do with the 2005 game. 
Now, I remember when this game came out, I did play it back when it came out, but I never finished it. I did come back a few years ago and played through the whole game, and I gotta say, after playing through the whole game, I had an absolute blast playing this game. It was made by Criterion, they did make Burnout Paradise shortly before this game, and you know, they definitely wanted to recreate Burnout Paradise's success with the Need for Speed series. Now I know Burnout Paradise wasn't every Burnout fan's cup of tea. I know there are plenty of people who prefer the older Burnout games. I ranked all the Burnout games and I've had plenty of people tell me that I had Paradise way too high on my list, but I really do love Burnout Paradise. That's one of my favorite games like of all time. And so when they made a Need for Speed game that was in the same vein as Burnout Paradise, like, I immediately knew that this was going to be one of my favorite Need for Speeds of all time. And it absolutely is. The game's story is pretty non-existent. In fact, there really just is no story. The game does have a most wanted list similar to the blacklist of the original. And you just want to be the best racer, that's really all there is to it. The game legit just drops you into the open world and says, go at it. And I actually really like this approach, it's very different. While I do, you know, love the original Most Wanted story and cheesiness and all of that, I think this is fine enough too, they let you get right into the action. They drop you into this open world, say go find a car, they, they obviously give you a car, but you can go find cars throughout the world and then you just get to the events. There isn't a shit ton of events like Burnout Paradise, it's not every intersection, but the game does have a ton of different events to it, and there's a bunch of cars to drive in. This game is very unique with its how it approaches cars, you literally can just drive around in the open world, and if you find one of the cars just lying around, then you can just get in it, and that's your new car, and then you can of course choose from these different cars. I've heard some people don't like the progression in this game because you can just go find the best cars like immediately, and yeah, that is true, you can go find some of the best cars immediately from the start of the game, but I think it's really unique. And I don't think that it messed with my progression at all, I wasn't using the very best cars immediately, I didn't know where they were, I didn't look it up, I just was going to use whatever car I found, and I think that's the best way to go about it. When it comes to the handling and the drifting and the feel and all of that, it is not as arcadey as say Burnout or even Hot Pursuit 2010, it's a little bit more realistic, but I still think it is very arcade and I still think the controls are very good. I think the general selection of the cars is pretty solid, especially for the time, and then when it comes to customization and upgrading the car, I actually thought it was pretty decent here. It wasn't, you know, underground or the original most wanted, but I think it was more than enough. When it comes to your events, it's your typical affair. You got your sprint races, your circuit races, your speed races where you got to keep a high average speed. There's an event where you'll get ambushed by the police and you got to avoid their pursuit. The police in this game are not as serious as Hot Pursuit or the original Most Wanted. They're pretty tame by comparison and they're pretty easy to get away from. So it is a shame that the police aren't as aggressive as they were in Most Wanted. These races, the sprint races, are actually different from Burnout Paradise as well as they do have checkpoints. So you can't just find your own route like Paradise, which is a little lame by comparison, but I mean I get it. It allows them to have a tighter designed open world. And the open world in this game is fine enough. It's a bit generic, I won't lie, and it's not as memorable as the original Most Wanted's, but again, it's fine enough and it's certainly better than some of the games that came out after this. The game has the same collectibles even as Paradise, with the destructible fences for the shortcuts and the billboards, so it really does feel like Burnout Paradise 2 to an extent. Obviously, it's nowhere near as aggressive, you're not going to be taking cars out anywhere near as much, and it's not as crazy, and the car damage doesn't get anywhere near as high, but you still go really fast, it's still a really fun time, it's still got that arcade racer, hard grip feel. And I can say without a doubt in my mind, it's one of the better open world racing games from this generation. It's one of the better open world need for speed games. It's, you know, it's not Most Wanted 2005. It's just not. It's not Burnout Paradise either. Both those games are better than this game. But I still think this game is very good. I know this game has been unfairly criticized and compared to Most Wanted 2005 because they share the same title. Yeah, they do share the same title and that game is better. I still think though this game has a ton of good parts to it. And I would still say it's one of my favorite Need for Speed games, and I have absolutely no problem recommending it. This game had a pretty kick-ass online back in the day too. I remember it actually had like some form of crossplay, which was like kind of crazy to even think about then, but it did. Nowadays, I'm pretty sure it doesn't go online. But Most Wanted 2012, I had an absolute blast playing it again. And I'm going to just throw it out there, special shout out to the soundtrack. The soundtrack is great in this game. I really did enjoy it. Of course, there's no heavy metal, but... It's still pretty good. I did think that it was a very good soundtrack, and I think this is a good game. It's it's totally worth trying nowadays. It's pretty cheap. It's available on Steam now even, so go try it there. 
And here we have what I believe to be the very best of the modern Need for Speed games, Need for Speed Hot Pursuit, released in 2010, developed by Criterion Games of Burnout fame. The game is a reboot of Need for Speed 3 Hot Pursuit, and they really tried to recapture the magic that that PS1 game had, only now for modern consoles. And they did more than just recapture it. This game is superb. This is not only one of the very best Need for Speed games, but this is one of the very best arcade racers probably of all time. I feel like this game really just got like everything right that a Need for Speed game should and it was when Criterion Games was really like at, their t at the top of their game. They just had Burnout Paradise before this and this game, while obviously very linear and not as open as Paradise, is still a fantastic time. This game really did go back to Need for Speed's roots with no story and it's all about the exotic cars and the high speed police chases. You go on these pretty long linear tracks just trying to go as fast as possible and get away from the police. In this game you can either be a racer or a police driver and there are full career modes for both roles. When you're a racer, you get much faster cars and it's all about racing and getting away from the police. When you're a cop, it's all about the power. You have a much stronger car, it's not as fast, but you can take out the racers and that's really what you're doing. And each side has power-ups, like an EMP or spike strips, and this is a decent improvement on the original game. It definitely adds some more variety and almost car combat-like aspects. Now when it comes to the tracks, it's definitely a return to form. It's not some big open world, all these tracks aren't connected to each other. They kind of are, some of them are connected, but it, they're not all connected to each other. Really what it is, is a bunch of individually designed tracks and you race on them and they're actually all pretty good. A lot of them are just straightaways, yes, but there's more to it than that. But does all of this really matter if the handling and the physics and the drifting and the driving aren't good? No, it doesn't. It's a good thing this game has great handling and drifting and driving. This game is very arcade. It feels pretty similar to Burnout. It's not as crazy as Burnout, but it's still very fun. It's still very fast arcade. You can turn really quickly. You can brake really quickly. It doesn't really try to be anything near realistic. It's about as crazy as Need for Speed has like ever gotten outside of Need for Speed 2. And the car selection is very good in this game. There's a lot of exotic and crazy looking cars that you and I could never even come close to affording. There is no vehicle customization, which I know has bugged plenty of people, but again, they were trying to make it like the old game. It really doesn't bother me that much. I don't need that much vehicle customization to be happy, especially when the cars are this cool. And interestingly enough, there's a bunch of unlicensed cars here. There's a bunch of fictional cars, which is not the usual for Need for Speed, but there's plenty of real cars here as well. The damage modeling is actually pretty decent for these as well, much more than later Need for Speed games. And this game, I got really nothing else to say other than it's a blast. When you're playing as the cop and you're trying to take out the racers, it's exhilarating, it's fun. And when you're trying to just get away from the police, it is so fast. You will be going crazy fast. There's shortcuts. Knowing the track is really important, getting away from the police. And you know, it was clear they focused on what the title implies, the hot pursuits. And that's the best part of the game. The hot pursuits are the best part of the game. And they're arguably some of the best cop chases in the entire series. The chases really are exhilarating, it can even get white knuckles sometimes, and the action just is so good in this game, like, this really is just such a fun time. I really can't sell it enough, because it just is that good. It really captures that burnout magic and brings it into Need for Speed, and I can see why Criterion was the chosen developer for Need for Speed, because this is great. And sometimes it just goes to show that more is not always better. We don't need some giant open world and a story and a ton of car customization to have a fun time. Sometimes it really is as simple as just a bunch of cool tracks, a bunch of cool cars, and the police going after you, and some really good handling. Like when it comes to sense of speed, I think this game really is unparalleled compared to the other Need for Speed games. There's plenty of really fast Need for Speed games, don't get me wrong. You can go pretty fast and the sense of speed is good, but this game, it just hits different, man. It's so good. I would honestly like to see a reboot of this game at this point in time where they have it again with modern graphics and all of that stuff. But to be honest, if they did that, I really doubt it would be better than this game. I really do, because this game is just that good. If you have not tried Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2010, go try it. If you like racing games, go try it. It's the most widely available on this list, really, because it is on old consoles, new consoles. It's even on the Switch. So go try it. There's really no reason not to. But that's it for this video. We're concluding it here. I had a fun time making these lists. Let me know your favorite Need for Speed down below or why I'm just totally wrong and don't know what I'm talking about and how I've never driven a car in real life or anything like that. 
anyways that's it for today so i hope everyone has a good day night christmas new year's valentine's day fourth of july whatever the nearest holiday is to you that's what i'm celebrating today it's all about you like share subscribe all that good stuff if you made it to this part of the video comment bricks thank you very much see you later